PayPal says they're going to find people for misinformation, then says, oops, that was misinformation. That <laughs> wasn't what we intended to say. What? That's, that's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, look, this is a really strange one, right? Usually by the time language like that shows up in the terms of service, it has been vetted by a lot of people. And so for PayPal to throw its hands up and say, we have no idea what happened is very strange. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more over the next day or two. But, you know, look, companies around the world are under more pressure from a lot of governments to do more moderation and to do it in places that you wouldn't expect. So I think people are right to be paying attention to this one. Isn't the bottom line here that when we have an increase in concern over content moderation. That just means more people and, and lower margins for these companies because as much as they're spending on technology, on AI to fix this, right now, it's not a software fix, it's a headcount fix. Absolutely, and when you think about how many customers PayPal has, the question of how it would even attempt to monitor when and how and where they were spreading misinformation just seems like an enormous logistical problem. And as you know, it would be quite expensive. So uh, there are a lot of good reasons uh, for PayPal not to do this, even just going beyond the, the free speech principles. And Casey, um, PayPal as a company, as a stock, we're looking at a one-year chart. It's now nearly 70 percent. Um, there's so much going on with this name. Some on the street were getting, you know, more interested because it looked almost like a value stock. And I wonder, you've had the CFO leave. Um, we haven't heard from Dan Shulman in a while. What's going on with leadership at this company? Do you think that it's sort of due for, for a change here? You know, I think it's a good question. Uh, PayPal is a, a venerable tech stock, right? It's been around for a while, and it might just not be showing the growth that investors are looking for. You know, as a longtime user of the app, I can't say it's changed much, added many new features, figured out new ways to get me to use it. So maybe the uh, leadership of that company needs to focus on the product side, uh, more on the terms of service side. Okay, and Casey, um Elon Musk welcomes Kanye West back to Twitter. And then Kanye West goes in lots of weird and, and anti-Semitic directions. Are we to believe that in Elon Musk's Twitter world, Kanye would not have been suspended? Well, certainly, if you believe his previous statements, that's the case, right? What Elon has said is that, for the most part, he believes that speech that is not illegal should be allowed to remain on the platform. And as abhorrent as the things that Kanye posted were, uh, they're legal to, to say in the United States. Um, I would also note, though, that Elon Musk hasn't said anything about what Kanye tweeted ever since this happened. And so there's still some question about what Elon would do if he indeed uh, take over the company. Right. But Casey, in this case, um, you could easily call this hate speech. And it feels like, you know, at least the recent comments that Elon Musk gave in that long FT interview, um, that maybe he'd be willing to take that off the platform. What can we take away from this? Well, look, I, I think you're right. And I think that if Elon becomes the owner of Twitter, he will gradually make the same decision that everyone else does in this space, which is that you do add moderation because it turns out that that's what your users want. You know, in all of these free speech uh, wars that we're having lately, uh, folks like Elon seem to forget that there is a market demand for content moderation, that people don't want to be in online spaces that are full of hate speech and abuse. And so they spend the money because it makes them money. And until we start having that conversation, I think we're just going to keep going in circles. Yeah, it's one thing to say that you want to be a public marketplace of ideas. It's another thing to say that you want to be an actual marketplace, right? Because once, once you want to be an actual marketplace, um, brands don't want to be associated with prominent speech and controversy on a platform, and users get tired of being trolled. Um, do, do Elon Musk's stated plans for making money with this platform line up with his also stated goals around free speech? I don't think they do, right? He's told us that he wants to dramatically increase the number of subscriptions on the platform. He wants to, to get that user base to be much larger than it is today. And how are you going to do that if every time you open the app, you're seeing hate speech, racist content, the, the stuff that every other social network gets rid of for a reason, right? So there's going to be a moment where reality slaps Elon upside the head. And I really think that he's going to have to make some of the same decisions that all of his peers have made in this space, because ultimately, it's the only way to keep the lights on at headquarters.